Good evening and welcome to our first annual State of the District Address. My name is Scott Murray and I'm the Superintendent of Ector County Independent School District and it's my pleasure to welcome you uh, to tonight's presentation. We've been busy the last year in Ector County ISD and we have a lot to share with you tonight. So without further ado, I'd like to get into uh, to this evening's presentation. Again, thank you uh, for joining us. So Ector County ISD um, is led by seven members of our uh, Board of Trustees. Uh, these individuals are elected publicly. They serve at the pleasure of the citizens of Ector County, and, uh, and they do an incredible job. It is, I consider, an honor to serve with these seven individuals. As we walk through tonight's presentation, uh, you will hear uh, a lot of the work that's happening in ECISD, which you can attribute to these seven individuals and the support that they provide uh, to the work happening in Ector County ISD for the 32,000 students that we serve every day. So Ector County ISD, we make up 906 square miles. We are a large county. Uh, many of our students are located in the um, in a local area, the city of Odessa. However, we have lots of kids spread throughout the more rural parts of this community. We serve our students on 43 campuses throughout uh, Ector County. Student enrollment currently is 32,000. However, last year we uh, ended the year with right around 34,000. The pandemic has played a significant role in the number of students that we serve. In fact, across the state of Texas and around the country, we've seen a reduction in the number of students, primarily in pre-kindergarten and kindergarten. In fact, in ECISD, the majority of those 2,000 students that we lost from last year to this year uh, come from our pre-kindergarten and kindergarten students. Demographically, approximately 78% of our students are Hispanic, 15% uh, of our students are white, 4% African American, and then 3% of our students represent a variety of, of different uh, ethnic categories. We speak 32 languages in ECISD, so our students come from countries all over the globe. We serve uh, 4,034 employees uh, currently in Ector County. Uh, we have 1,928 teachers, so almost 2,000 teachers serving the students in ECISD. Uh, from a facility perspective, we occupy over 5 million square feet of space. Of course, that's the 43 schools and the other uh, facilities, our administration building and other facilities that we have within ECISD. We have an annual budget of approximately $342 million. That includes our local general fund, as well as uh, funding that received from the state of Texas and the federal government. So a lot of different uh, resources come in uh, to Ector County to support the learning um, of our students. And our teachers and staff members come from 16 different countries. So not only are the students from ECISD representing diverse environments, but our staff members also come from places um, around the world. Of course, the pandemic has created a different type of learning situation. In fact, the slide that you see in front of you right now uh, is about the learning modality of our students. Uh, prior to last year, uh, this would have been a slide representing 100% because all of our students would have been in a face-to-face -face environment. But the pandemic created a different type of experience for kids. Uh, so in October uh, of, of 2020, approximately 62% of our students were learning in an in-person environment, and then 38% of our students were remote. However, in February, as we've kind of traversed the year, more and more of our students are joining us in that face-to-face -face environment. In fact, Currently, 71% of our kids are face-to-face -face and 29% of our students are still learning in that virtual environment. One year ago, the month of March of 2020, the pandemic uh, it really uh, began to affect not only life in our world, but life specifically in the state of Texas and most certainly in Ector County. And uh, I, I'm incredibly proud of the response that the, the staff members, uh, our students, and our uh, community gave uh, to this pandemic. It certainly created a crisis, but uh, good leaders, good staff members, a good team rises from a crisis. And that's exactly 
uh, what uh, this district has done uh, because of the pandemic. So in a one week period of time, I remember vividly, I am standing in the middle of the street of Marfa, Texas, enjoying spring break and my phone rings and I am notified that uh, we are going to have to close schools, not just in Ector County, but across the state of Texas uh, because of the pandemic. And so I hopped in my vehicle and drove back to the city of Odessa and called members of our leadership team. And we began to put together the plans that we would later, or actually not later, not much later, as you can see, within one week, we began to put plans in place to educate our children. Again, at that point, 34,000 kids that within a seven-day period of time, we instantly uh, flipped the switch from serving all of those students in a face-to-face -face environment to serving all of those students in a traditional, or excuse me, in a virtual environment. And again, very proud of the work that happened in just those few days to transition our students. So school looked different. In fact, the image shows a cafeteria. Normally on a school day, a cafeteria would be filled with children eating breakfast or lunch and, and staff members uh, in an elementary opening ketchup packets for kids. Uh, but cafeterias began to look different in the month of March and April and May. And they turned into locations in which uh, teams of teachers and administrators got together and created uh, individual uh, work packets for kids. Because in Ector County, not every single student had the internet access in their home, nor did they have um, a, a computing device in their hands. And so our students, many of them were using paper pencil at this time. And so what you see uh, are the packets that were created uh, by our teachers uh, and administrators. Some of our students were learning in a virtual environment. So in the homes, uh, we did have teachers and students that began that virtual learning process and proud of the work that happened. And that evolved over time and more and more of our students, as we developed uh, internet access for them and provided devices, they were able to work in that virtual environment. Our technology team became really busy really fast. Uh, they provided resources to families online. Those students that did have internet access uh, had uh, access pretty quickly to a variety of different digital tools that we owned as a district. Uh, we set up help desks uh, for our students. Uh, we had a technology helpline was quickly established, not just for kids during the day, but also after hours. Uh, that tech helpline was available for our students and our parents. Uh, in fact, many of the calls that came in were from moms and dads that needed assistance as they supported their students uh, during this virtual time. And so very proud of our technology team and teachers for quickly creating these online digital resources for our students to support their learning. Our nurses, our counselors, our principals, uh, our police officers, teachers, others uh, checked on our students. We, we realized that early on during the pandemic, it created um, a lot of trauma for our students and families. In fact, many of our moms and dads lost their jobs during this time. Uh, just the simple fear of watching the news every day and, and seeing more and more cases of, of people con uh, contracting COVID-19 and, and then death uh, began, to, uh, began to enter our state and, and our own community. And so there was a lot of fear and we knew that it was important that we check on our students. And so very proud of the teams of people that on a regular basis ensured that children in ECISD uh, were safe, that they that we they knew that we were uh, thinking about them. Uh, they knew that we wanted uh, their best interest at, at heart. And so I appreciate uh, the various members of our team that constantly uh, checked on our kids to make sure that they uh, were in great shape. We established um, some supports for our families. Again, the trauma that was created, many of our moms and dads were letting us know that they were having even a difficult time uh, working with their children because of trauma. And so we, our counselors developed an opportunity for our families to get assistance. Uh, members of our community, our, our, our social workers, our psychologists uh, were, were activated and began to support members of, of our community as we, um, again, worked with children to, and families to provide the nurturing that they needed uh, during this, this difficult time uh, of stress. We established, uh, thanks to our nurses and a team of teachers, a child care facility. Our nurses uh, in our community, our doctors, those people that were working in, the, in our hospitals, they were incredibly busy and it became difficult for them to find places that would take care of their children. And so we quickly opened as a school district, a, a child care facility specific for members of our medical community. Again, our doctors, our nurses, those that needed to be on the front line serving our families 
um, throughout this community. And so we were very, really proud to partner with the medical community uh, to bring this to, to fruition. And again, thank, thank our teachers and those uh, that were a part of that very special uh, program at, at Zavala that we opened. Our career in technology education, teachers and students, this was pretty fascinating. Using the equipment that we have, our 3D printers and using the innovative minds of our teachers and students, our CTE, uh, career and technical education folks got busy and began to create uh, PPE supplies and equipment for members of our medical community. You can see some examples of that here. Very proud of our CTE folks for taking their work, uh, the supports that they provide the children uh, in our system, and actually using uh, that knowledge and those skills to uh, empower our medical community to keep them safe as they uh, met our medical uh, situations uh, as a community. So again, thanking and recognizing the work of our CTE team uh, for going well above and beyond the call of duty. Speaking above and beyond, um, our food services team, one of the needs that our children have in this community uh, is that they rely on us uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday, for breakfast and lunch. And when we are not in school, uh, we have children that do not eat uh, because they are so dependent upon the school district for sustenance. And uh, our food service, our child nutrition team quickly got together and developed strategies so that we could continue the feeding process. In fact, between the month of March and the end of school in May, uh, we fed over one mil was served over one million meals uh, to children throughout ECISD. And so to the thank you to the creativity, uh, ingenuity of our child nutrition team and really going up well above and beyond the call of duty to make sure that the children and families of this community uh, were fed during the pandemic. That we, that we have, have activated, activated in 40, in 40 of, our of our campuses, campuses opportunities, opportunities to provide meals for every child serving breakfast and lunch each and every day. Good morning. Breakfast, milk, apple, kolachi. Thank you. That we, that have, we have. And you can see uh, our cafeteria folks have a great time. Uh, you know, I, I think that's one of the things that even I was able to experience as I went out and and, uh, and worked with those folks and, and observed them in engaging with families. Uh, they always did it with a smile. They got to know the families and the children as they served uh, those meals. And then finally, I uh, lift up as we think about the pandemic, the work um, of our trustees. Uh, one of the things our trustees did is to uh, provide uh, for uh, the financial situations of each of our staff members, the over 4,000 members of this team. Our trustees made sure uh, that our staff members were paid. 100% of our folks uh, were paid during this pandemic. And we are very grateful uh, to the seven members of the ECISD Board of Trustees for making that decision uh, to ensure that our staff members, every single staff member, was taken care of financially during this pandemic. One of the things uh, last March that we had planned to do uh, prior to the pandemic was to roll out uh, and officially launch the ECISD strategic plan that we call the future is now. Unfortunately, the pandemic changed those plans to roll our strategic plan out to our community, but what it didn't change was the body of work. And tonight we wanna provide an update on our strategic plan and the work uh, that has been happening with our strategic plan and the progress that we are making. Our strategic plan starts with a vision. We recognize as an organization that the children that we serve every day in our district, the 32,000 children, represent the future of the city in which we live, the future of our county, our state, our nation, and even our world. We want to make sure that, that children uh, that graduate from ECISD are globally competitive, and uh, they, as they do, represent the future um, of this community. We want to make sure that every uh, part of our mission statement is making sure that that our children, and there's an interesting word in this mission statement that I'll lift up tonight, and that is adaptable. If the pandemic has taught us anything, it has caused us, uh, taught us to be uh, very flexible and to be adaptable in this ever-changing society. We never know from one day to the next what the world has in store for us, and it is our responsibility as an educational institution to make sure that our kids are able to adapt uh, to society and to life no matter what the future may hold. Again, now more important than ever before. Our Board of Trustees has established some very lofty goals for us, and you can see the goals on your screen. The first one it relates specifically to the academic performance of our kids, elementary, middle, and high school. Currently in ECISD, 
32% of our students are proficient in the academic areas. By the year 2024, our board of trustees would like 60%, at least 60% of our students to be proficient in all academic areas. Goal number two deals specifically with reading in the third grade. Currently, 35% of our students are proficient in reading. We would like to be at 45% by the year 2024. And finally, our third goal from our board of trustees relates, uh, focuses specifically on post-secondary life. Uh, we call this the College Career and Military Readiness Goal. CCMR for short in Texas. Currently, 56% of our students are considered post-secondary ready, a college career military ready. We would like 65% of our students or more uh, to be college career military ready by the year 2024. Those are the goals that the Board of Trustees has established for us as a system. It's our job as the 4,000 members of this team to make sure that we put together a body of work uh, that allows us to attain those goals by the year 2024. And that is the strategic plan. Um, and we developed a strategic plan. It has three components. The first one is all about our foundation. The second element is about the people, the talent, if you will, of ECISD. And the third element of our strategic plan is all about the students and learning in our organization. First element is foundation. Uh, any of you that have been a part of a building process be uh, before, whether building a home or building any kind of structure, you know that the most important part of that construction project is the foundation. And in ECISD, we recognize that we must have a solid foundation on which to build uh, the future of ECISD. Lots of work involved in this foundation. First, feeding. As we think about what is important in the foundation, our students must have uh, food sustenance in order to be uh, educated. And so we instituted this year a free feeding program today in ECISD. Every single child in our system, regardless of their financial situation, has free breakfast and free lunch in every school in ECISD. Uh, foundational. We know that if a child does not eat well, if a child is not uh, nourished every day, learning simply cannot happen for those children. Um, we serve meals in our classrooms, one of our responses to the pandemic. Again, our, our child nutrition team has been very flexible. They have been adaptable, if you will, to this environment. We now serve meals at all 43 schools. Those meals are served in classrooms. And so those cafeterias are still not being used even today um, as we make sure that we maintain safety in each of our schools. In addition, again, 29% of our students are served, excuse me, uh, are uh, educated in a virtual environment. Many of those students and families pick up uh, their food every day from school. We offer curbside meal pickup for those families that are interested. And then finally, we deliver over 700 meals every day to families uh, in their homes. Some of our children are on their own during the day because mom and dad are working and we deliver to each home um, meals. And so we're, again, very proud of um of our child nutrition team for the work that they do to make sure that our kids are fed every day. You can see images of that, packaging up those meals, delivering those meals. We have a fleet of volunteers that help us every day ensure that our families are well fed uh, in their homes and to make sure that our, our children um, are well fed on campus. Secondly, as a part of our foundation, we recognize that our children must feel safe uh, as a part of their learning environment, they have to be nurtured, and we are investing heavily in what we call social-emotional learning, ensuring, uh, and again, the safety of children, ensuring that our children know that they are important. They are the reason that we come to work every day to educate our children and to ensure that our, our students are valued. They feel appreciated and valued within the learning environment. We actually measure this. Uh, we developed a measure in ECISD that we call school connectedness. It is important for us that every pre-K student through 12th grader feels connectedness, feels connected to their school. We use a survey uh, from a, an organization called Panorama and our current rating, uh, our indicator of success, our school connectedness measure, if you will, is 59. The national average is 61, so we're very proud of where we are today, but yet we know that we have some more work to do. But currently, our school connectedness score, again, this comes from our kids uh, telling us how they feel about school is 59, national average is 61, pretty proud of where we are at that point. Anytime, anywhere learning. We recognize as an educational institution that part of our foundation is making sure that every single child has the resources that they need to be educated. 
Over the last eight months, we've purchased 37,000 brand new technology devices for our students. Today in, in ECISD, Every single child from pre-K through 12th grade has a brand new computing device that is provided by the school district. Uh, we use, we purchase both iPads and Chromebooks. Those are age appropriate. We uh, distribute those, uh, again, based upon this, the particular age of our children. And uh, we're excited to be able to do that. You can see uh, some of our kids in these images uh, using the tools and then some of our teachers as we've uh, provided, the, we've given those tools out for um, students. But the tool by itself isn't enough. Uh, in addition to the tool, once those tools go home, if our children do not have the internet access in their home, then that tool is 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 not healthy, uh, is not productive for that child. And so the second area uh, that's foundational for us or another foundational area is home internet connectivity. Part of our strategic plan is ensuring that every single child in ECISD, every family has high speed broadband access in their home. Uh, we are very proud that we've uh, really narrowed that gap significantly this year, uh, partnering with a, a variety of different entities to provide wireless connectivity to every single family in ECIS. Ground control to Major Tom Ground control to Major Tom Take your protein pills and put your helmet on Ground control to Major Tom Sing countdown engines on Two. Check ignition and may God's love be with We are excited to announce today that Ector County ISD will be the first school district in the country to partner with SpaceX to bring their Starlink technology, their internet technology to families in our community. This is ground control to Major Tom. Excited, as you could tell, about that opportunity. ECISD, uh, because of the generous donation uh, of a variety of individuals um, and philanthropic organizations, we were able to partner with SpaceX, the first school district in the country, to bring uh, their Starlink satellite technology to families in ECISD, families that did not have uh, another way to access the internet in their home. And, and in fact, tonight, uh, we actually have spoken with one of those families using that. I think you'll find this interesting. Enjoy. We went looking for assistance because our internet wasn't that is not that great out here where we live. Our three children, they all being in uh, virtual, it was very hard for for sometimes they would be the three of them would be on Zoom at the same time and it would cut off. It was very hectic at first, especially in the beginning, because we would have to use like the the Wi-Fi out of my phone and I. Uh, by the middle, a couple of until a couple of weeks into the month, we were out of service. So then, they, we would have to be constantly telling the teachers we we're having trouble with the internet, and my children would be very frustrated because of it. And they'd be like, "Mom, we need to connect, and we can't. It's not working right now, or we need to do homework, and it's not working right now." And of course, yeah, you have to have the internet for them to be able to submit their homework and everything that they needed for the day. Well, yeah, the the children are there. They're going to be much more comfortable because they don't have to be coming up to me like, mom, it's not working, mom, it's not, it's not loading, mom, you know, because they get frustrated and they don't want to do their homework when they're really, they don't have the internet. So, you know, it's going to be a lot better for their grades and it's going to be a lot better for their sanity as well. 
that especially like my kindergartner if he couldn't if he couldn't do the meetings with his teacher he didn't want he wasn't interested in school like they have he needed his you know at least once or easy, twice huh? the meetings with his teacher daily and he if wanted to do his homework if, the, if he didn't have internet he didn't he wasn't interested wow. with the paperwork with anything Listening to the voices of our parents, I think, is a, a reminder to all of us how critical uh, these foundational pieces are to many of our families. And if we uh, are unable to put these foundational pieces in place, then learning can't happen. And this mom said it very well. Uh, learning doesn't happen in her home uh, unless her children are accessing their teachers. And the only way, I, I think she talked about her kindergartner, the only way that her kindergartner would actually pay attention is when he was live with his teacher. And again, those foundational pieces, closing those uh, those equity divides are pretty important for ECISD. In addition to that, uh, ECISD also has been a part, uh, we've developed a, what we call the Connector Task Force, a group of, of community-wide leaders representing our medical community, uh, elected officials, uh, our business community, and of course, the education community, all working together to ensure that not just the families in ECISD have access to high-speed broadband, but every family in Ector County has access to, to high-speed broadband. So we're excited to lead that effort in our community and, and excited to collaborate with other uh, community leaders to make this happen for our family. And finally, we serve on the statewide. We look at not only as in this issue as something in Ector County, but this is a statewide issue in Texas. And so we are proud to serve as a member of Operation Connectivity. Uh, the governor appointed uh, a committee of individuals that are focused specifically on addressing the issue of broadband and equity across the state of Texas, excited to play a leadership role in that opportunity. The next part of our strategic plan focuses upon talent. Oh, interesting research that says the number one factor that influences student achievement is the teacher, and the number two factor that influences student achievement is the principal. And so we believe heavily in investing in the four, over 4,000 employees of our system. If we are going to change outcomes for kids, if we are truly going to prepare kids uh, to be globally competitive, then we must invest in the people that support those children every day. Uh, again, the 4,000 employees of our system. So a lot of work happening in talent. Very proud of this statistic. One year ago in 2019-20, we started the school year with 352 teacher vacancies in our system. This school year, we started with 38 vacancies in our system. So very proud of the teachers that we are attracting to ECISD, uh, proud of the way that we are taking care of our employees and retaining some of the very best uh, teachers and other uh, staff members uh, to serve our students. We're developing pipelines. One of the, another piece of research that is interesting, uh, some national research was conducted on teachers and, and why they teach where they do. And the research said that 60% of the teachers in the United States of America teach within 25 miles of the high school from which they graduated. So what that says to us is if indeed 60% of our teachers uh, come from our local area, then we need to do a much better job of growing our own, of developing pipelines. So part of our strategic plan work is investing deeply in growing and developing our very own uh, teachers. You're looking at four different ways that we're doing that in ECISD. Uh, Odessa Pathway to Teaching looks at support staff members, our paraprofessionals and others that are currently not certified, but who would like to be certified. And so we basically send them back to school, uh, get them certified. And then um, if they're a highly effective teacher, we hire them uh, back into the system. Uh, our Odessa College and the University of Texas at Permian Basin got together. They recognized that ECISD uh, had an issue with hiring enough teachers. They saw the amount of vacancies that we had, and those two got together and created what we call OC to UPB in three. It's a three-year opportunity uh, for, for high school graduates to uh, go to college, start at Odessa College, and then finish at UTPB and have a teaching certificate. So we are incredibly appreciative of those two higher education organizations that got together on their own uh, to develop the solution specifically for ECISD. Grateful for that opportunity. The future teachers of Odessa, we're looking down into our system, even down into middle school, identifying students who have a passion for teaching and growing them throughout their high school careers 
and encouraging them to become teachers, supporting them in the way. In fact, even offering uh, over 70 credits to those students during their high school years, 70 college credits that they can take with them and graduate within two years and then come back and teach in ECISD. And then finally, Opportunity Culture provides a very unique situation in which uh, teacher residents that are currently attending the University of Texas at Permian Basin can work in a residency program and be paid for that opportunity as they are making their way into the teaching profession. So four very powerful pipelines that we've developed specifically to grow teachers in our own community. Another thing that we're doing to invest deeply in teachers is a program we call Opportunity Cultures. Uh, opportunity Culture, partnering with an organization called Public Impact out of the state of North Carolina. Uh, opportunity Culture allows us to be very thoughtful and to strategically uh, think about how we utilize teacher positions. We call that strategic staffing. Again, thinking differently about the traditional role of the teacher, providing leadership opportunities for those teachers. And um, this particular methodology also improves student outcomes. It ensures that our children have access to the very best teachers, the most effective teachers. Excited again to offer opportunity culture to teachers in ECISD. Speaking of opportunity culture, we are joined tonight uh, by one of our very own opportunity culture teachers. And so at this time, I'd like to introduce Gabby Berry. Gabby, are you out there? I am. I'm out, I'm out here in Texas. Texas. There you go. Hey, Gabby, thank you for joining us tonight. No problem. That's what I'm here for. Good. So we've got a lot of people watching tonight and opportunity culture. Those two words are, are new for folks. So tell us what, what you are an opportunity culture teacher. You're involved in the program. Tell us from your perspective, what is opportunity culture? Um, I'm a teacher that is in charge of a team of teachers uh, that we work towards a common goal for our students. Um, I'm a lead teacher. So when it comes to like um, looking through instruction or lesson plans or data, uh, we modify as we go. Uh, we see where our changes um, and what kind of risks that we need to take. And we take those risks. Um, I, I'm privileged to have an amazing administration team at this point, and um, they uh, encourage uh, my, my risk taking um, that, that we've experienced this year. Um, I take the team um, of my uh, teachers, my colleagues, we figure out um, our strengths, our weaknesses, we're working together. Um, normal grade levels do do that, but instead of just uh, working, collaborating, all together, I am leading this group of teachers um, to help support our students' future uh, and encourage them and grow them uh, intellectually, emotionally, um, anything that they're lacking here at school um, or at home, we're, we're encouraging them to make their own goals, successes, um, celebrate uh, their victories. Uh, so, you know, it, it would, it's a little bit different than a normal uh, grade level of teachers that are collaborating. Instead, I encourage that to happen with my team and I'm leading that. Yeah, it, it, you used a lot of vocabulary in there that I found fascinating. You, even you ended with my team. And so, you know, typically when we think of teacher, we think of a person in the classroom with a group of students, but you actually as a teacher are leading a team. You've talked about student achievement and growing kids. You've talked about even growing your colleagues. Um, why? why? Why did this interest you and why are you involved in opportunity culture? Uh, well, every year that I've been a teacher, um, I've always thought to myself, how can I perfect my craft? How can I make what I'm doing better for the students? Uh, and, and I've been lucky enough and very fortunate to work with amazing teachers at ECISD. Um, and we've all have collaborated at one time or another. Um, I just saw this opportunity, uh, opportunity and, and, uh, and jumped at it. Um, when, when what interests what interest me the most, the most was being the multicultural leader is I'm cultivating a, a culture of change. And yep. um, to me, to make uh, large jumps uh, in education, grow my students, I have to take risks. And that's the type of culture that I'm cultivating here with my students. Um, 
they're uh, it's it's the school like i said the, i'm extremely fortunate to be working at ek downing having uh, administrators that encourage me to take those risks and um develop my teachers as well as my students uh so i i had i had always done that i guess it just in my room but i felt like um i was missing something so uh that's that's where this uh opportunity culture gave me the opportunity to um make it happen Good, good. Well, you're, you are making a difference, Gabby. Thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you for the work that you're doing. Uh, you make me proud. Uh, okay. And I know you and your team are making a significant impact in all of the students that you're serving. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. The investment in teachers uh, continues. So not only opportunity culture, but ECISD is one of the first districts in Texas uh, to go through the uh, teacher incentive allotment uh, program. The teacher incentive allotment in Texas provides, uh, re actually recognizes uh, the top teachers in the state of Texas and now in ECISD. Those teachers that are moving students, they're growing them. Uh, they are the most effective teachers that we have, and it provides in ECISD additional compensation for the most effective teachers of, of up to $25,000 a year. Again, we are, we are proud to be able to do this work, um, grateful that the state of Texas has provided this opportunity, and thrilled that teachers in I ECISD, the most effective teachers that we have, um, will have this opportunity for them in the years to come. So excited to, to be a part of the Teacher Incentive Allotment Program in Texas. In addition to investing in teachers, we, we're growing them in another way. Uh, several years ago, the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards was created. Uh, it is the gold standard for teacher certification in the United States of America. It is a way to uh, develop teachers. Um, it hones, allows the teacher to hone their skills. It allows the teacher to become a reflective practitioner and certainly uh, takes them from a place they are today to a much higher place and elevates them within the profession. ECISD has received a significant grant uh, from a local philanthropic organization uh, so that not a single teacher in ECISD will have to pay to go through this process. And teachers, in fact, who become National Board certified will automatically qualify for the teacher incentive allotment, which will allow them to earn an additional three to $9,000 a year in compensation, a pretty awesome opportunity for teachers in ECISD. We don't have any national board certified teachers teaching in ECISD with us today, but we do have a teacher that is going through the process. Uh, Brooke Adrian is here. She's a teacher at Austin Montessori, and uh, she's a, a new teacher to ECISD, but she has jumped in head first uh, to this national board certification process. And so Brooke, are you with us? You are muted, Brooke. Let's see. I am. There I am. I thought it came off. Hey, there you go. There you go. All right, Brooke. My first question to you is why? The National Board process is challenging. So why are you going through it as a teacher in ECISD? Well, initially, when I taught in Florida, I moved here from Florida specifically for this job. So proud to be a new Texan. And um, Texas is doing really big things with their education here, specifically ECISD. And I specifically remember going on a learning walk and observing several NBCT, National Board Certified Teachers, and seeing what they were doing in their classroom. And afterwards, we had an opportunity to speak with them. And every accolade they could give was because of their process and certification. So once it was on the table here, I definitely sought after that. Um, just want to, exactly as you said, Dr. Mary, um, hone in on my skills, um, Good. refine my craft, and really just become the best teacher I can. Only 3% of teachers are NBCT, National Board Certified Teachers, and so that's huge. And hard work pays off, and there definitely is um, monetary incentive to go along with that. But sure. in addition to that, it's very powerful in the classroom. Um, and research has shown, I see a question here from Teresa in the chat, about special education and services of that and national birds board certified teachers have been shown to have higher gains so it's scientifically proven that the teachers um really hone in on exactly what they're good at and refine their skill 
And you're exactly right. That's why we are investing in this program specifically for Brooke, you and uh, your colleagues across the district. Research has shown that National Board certified teachers uh, grow their students at a faster rate uh, than other teachers. It, it, research has proven that National Board certified teachers, the students that have you actually outperform uh, their peers. So we're, we're, we're grateful that you're undertaking. So what's it like? You're kind of in the middle of the process now. Tell us a little bit about what it's like. Well, I just started um, a few months ago, and so okay. there's a lot of support, and it's nationwide. So yes. we get on conference calls, and the networking opportunity is phenomenal because you have the ability to collaborate with so many teachers in so many different um, climates, cultures, demographics, and so you really have the ability to connect with those teachers and see what they're going through, similarity, share best practices as you're going through the program. So that's a huge mm part of helping you through the program um, has four different components and takes approximately a year and a half. Yep. And it really puts you in the top tier. I mean, this is something that is the highest accolade a teacher can attain. Good. Well, we appreciate you uh, traveling through this process. Again, not only will you benefit as a teacher, uh, but your students are going to benefit for years years to come. Um, so thank you for sharing your story with us tonight. Not only is Brooke a teacher, but she's a mom. And I think, Brooke, you have to go to a baseball game because you have a little kid <laughs> playing tonight. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate you and the work that you do for kids every day in ECISD. Thank yes, you. sir. Thank you, Dr. Mary. You're welcome. All righty. So a lot of investment uh, in our teachers and in our team, growing and developing people. We cannot do this work without the 4,000 uh, members of the team in ECISD. And our investment in them will allow us to continue to be better and better for the students that we serve. The final uh, leg of our strategic plan deals with our students, the reason that we come to work every day. And we call this component the learning journey. We need to create different types of experiences for kids, think about different investments for our students. And we have a lot of work happening in the learning journey. We want to share a little bit of that with you. First, pre-K. We believe in early childhood education. We know that the earlier we can start educating our children, the more successful they will be. In fact, there is a significant amount of national research that supports early interventions uh, with our children, early learning, early literacy, uh, these early uh, opportunities. So ECISD was proud this year uh, to expand our pre-K for the very first time. We traditionally had operated a half-day pre-K for four-year-olds. This year in 2020-21, we expanded pre-K to full day. Now, every single four-year-old in ECISD has a full day of pre-K. And then next year, we're excited to announce that we will be expanding pre-K to three-year-olds. So for the very first time, we will welcome a, a host of three-year-old children to pre-K in ECISD. So pre-K for three-year-olds, pre-K for four-year-olds, that's a lot of early learning happening in ECISD. We have a special guest with us tonight, and I want to ask her that question of why. Uh, Sherry Palmer is uh, one of our principals, and specifically, she leads our pre-K centers. And so, uh, Sherry, if you are, there she is. Welcome, Sherry. So we could, I think we could probably crown you as the queen of pre-K. Um. Uh, Maybe not. <laughs> there you I, I think you probably earned I'm, that. I'm oh. the oldest one. I think you're the queen. Um, <laughs> Thank so, you. What's the, why pre-K? We're making well, these significant investments, Sherry. Why? I'm going to go back to the very first word that you mm -hmm. um, spent some significant time on, foundation. Mm -hmm. There's a parable that talks about two people that went out to build a house. One mm -hmm. built it on the sand and another one built it on a solid rock. Um, the house that stood the test of time was built on the rock rather than the sand. And so in pre-K, we are building the foundation for children on a solid rock. And the earlier that we can um, start building that foundation for kiddos, uh, the better off. Uh, we know that years ago, you know, I was one of those kids that uh, was fortunate enough to live in a state where we had kindergarten and I went to kindergarten. Sure. Kindergarten builds a fine foundation, but oh my goodness, if you can start two years ahead of kindergarten to yeah. build a foundation for kids, then, then um, the gaps that occur or can occur later disappear 
because mm -hmm. you because your foundation is is firm enough. Um, yeah. So several years ago, there was a study done and a book written called 30 Million Words. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of you are familiar with that. The bottom line is this. Um, children that are exposed to a lot of language um, are better readers. They're better thinkers. And then ultimately, really better mathematicians, better mm -hmm. well-rounded uh, students um, yes. and, and citizens and people. So the study said that um, in a professional um, uh, family where a lot of a lot of words were happening, that mm -hmm. by the end of a three year old's uh, third year, they were exposed to 40 million words. Wow. But a kid that comes from a home that's not, you know, and and not that parents do this um, deliberately. It's just where people are in life, mm -hmm. um, you know, busy taking care of kids and oftentimes don't 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 have the oral language to give their kids um, by the end of though by the end of those that those three year old year, they were exposed to only 15 million words. Mm -hmm. And so you see, that's a significant difference. Yes. And so you 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 can't learn to think, you can't learn to read, you can't learn to do math unless you have development of oral language, unless the, the foundation is laid for you. That's what pre-K three and four years does. Yeah. There is so much oral language going on um, uh, in our in our school. I mean, Dr. Murray, you've been here. We're not a quiet school. It is not happening here. No, we are no. developing language with our kids and setting that foundation that on, on solid rock for kids. You know, there are gaps everywhere in education. So when so kids come to us at all places, kids come to us that have been exposed to those 30 million words, kids that have, have that come to us that have been exposed to only 15 million mm -hmm. words. OK, by the end of their third. So th the gaps. The, the gaps are there, but if a, if we are able to educate a child starting at three years old, then we can close those gaps significantly. But yep. if we don't, then those gaps just keep getting wider and wider and wider. And can the gaps be closed? Absolutely. But as the gaps widen, the more difficult it is to close those gaps. Yep. So firm foundation, close the gaps. Um, three and four year old is where it's happening. Yeah, you got it. I think we may have to move this part of the uh, strategic plan over to the foundation bucket because I think you make a great point. You know, pre-K uh, spoken by uh, the queen of pre-K is foundational to our kids. In fact, Sherry, even our own research in ECISD uh, talks about the gap. And actually, there is a gap between kids that go to pre-K and kids that don't. And the gap is kids that go to pre-K do better in kindergarten than children that do not. And so there is a gap. So you are already in the work that you do, the work that your teachers do on your campus every day, you are closing the gap for our children. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for you bet. Uh, kids every single day. Pre-K. Come have absolutely. fun with us and learn. And every three and four year old parent out there, please give us the opportunity. Dr. Yeah. Murray, can I read just a short note from a parent because I think oh. this sums it up. Do it. Absolutely. So at the end of last year, remember that was a pandemic year. Yeah. And remember yeah. we struggled from March to um, May to, to um, educate our kids. But this note still landed on my desk. Okay. I can't thank you all enough. Oh, so it was addressed to those, to everyone that had a part in Emily's education. I can't yep. thank you all enough for everything you have done. I'll never forget the relief in knowing that someone had finally believed in me. Now that's the parent. We believe yep. in the parents as well. We set a foundation there as well. And someone really took us seriously at educating our child. You all have done amazing things with Emily and we just love you all. May God bless you. Good. That says yep. it all, doesn't it? It does, absolutely. As you said, Sherry, the foundation. Um, of our work with children. So again, thank you for serving our kids. Thank you for being with us you tonight. Bet. Thank you so much for allowing the opportunity to serve the best kids in the world.
There you go. They are. Absolutely. Thanks again. All right. So not only pre-K, but also blended learning. As we think about serving our kids differently and, 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 and adapting and adjusting to this uh, new environment, we are introducing blended learning. Blended learning is taking our, an excellent teacher and uh, adding a virtual learning to that specific teacher, and that is called blended. We're excited to be able to bring that to uh, ECIS. Do we have multiple examples of that happening already at middle schools and elementary schools across the system? Blended learning allows a child uh, to take ownership of their own learning, ownership of the time that they spend, ownership of the place that they learn, the path that they take in learning, and also the pace of learning, how quickly uh, they learn. And so we're excited to be able to introduce blended learning strategies uh, throughout ECISD. The MAP assessment, the measure of academic progress. One of the things that we're doing as a part of our learning journey is to understand more about our children. Uh, this year, we introduced the MAP assessment, uh, which we, provides new resources, new information about children, provides it to the teacher, provides it to the family, and provides it to the child themselves. We give the MAP assessment three times a year, uh, early in the year, as, as school begins, halfway through the year, and at the end of the year. Our teachers use these data. You can see an example of what our teachers see. There's a lot of information that the MAP assessment provides our teachers. When the teachers review those data, they adjust their instruction based upon what the data is telling um, a specific teacher. And we tailor that instruction to meet the needs of our students. In fact, parents in ECISD also have a chance to see the MAP assessment. This is a typical parent report. So moms and dads, three times a year, I get a copy of the MAP assessment, which shows them not only where their children are and how they're performing, but also, and more importantly, how they're growing. Um, and parents, uh, as they look at this information, uh, this particular report provides uh, supports that parents can provide. After a parent sees the data, there are specific things that mom and dad can do to support the learning of their own child. We're excited to announce that we've added additional school days to our elementary calendar. ECISD is one of the few districts in Texas that are participating in what's called the Additional Days School Year Program. We've added 30 additional days this summer to the elementary calendar. And next summer, we've also added days in both June and July uh, to increase and to accelerate the learning of our elementary students. Again, excited to be able to do that for our kids. Uh, they deserve that. Our students deserve excellence, and this is yet another way that we will be able to provide excellent opportunities for kids. And then choices. We're uh, very proud to, uh, to acknowledge the choices and options that families have in ECISD. At the elementary level, many different types of options for uh, parents to choose from, leadership academies, uh, career academies, health and wellness opportunities, STEAM opportunities, science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics, academic opportunities, but a variety of choices and options that families have in ECISD. At the middle school level, we continue with options options and choices for families, and also at the high school level, additional choices that families can make. Over the next several months and even years, we'll be adding even more choices uh, to the lists that we have. We will be listening to members of our community, our students, and our families to better understand what types of choices and options they want as uh, we educate their children and look forward to adding to our choice portfolio so moms and dads have lots of choices within ECISD. So that's a lot of work. Our board of trustees has established some lofty goals for us. Uh, we de designed and developed and are now implementing a strategic plan. But how will we know that this body of work is actually making an impact on our students? We've developed a series of what we call indicators of success. And these indicators that you can see before you um, are directly aligned to the board goals. In the first column, you can see the, the, the first, the second, or the third goal that it is aligned to. The second column represents the indicators. We are measuring attendance. We're looking at student growth. We're looking at how ready our kindergartners are uh, as they begin their school year. We're looking at third grade, reading and mathematics, sixth grade, eighth grade. Uh, once our kids get in high school, looking at both math and reading, also looking at their post-secondary readiness. Are students at the high school level are ready for 
uh, the post-secondary world, looking at our graduation rate, our post-secondary enrollment, how many kids, uh, when once they graduate from ECISD, how many kids enroll in a technical school, a two-year degree, a four-year degree uh, program, or uh, service in the military. It is important today that our students have post-secondary experiences. A high school degree is no longer enough. In fact, in the state of Texas today, 70% of the jobs that are created require some form of post-secondary credential. And we want to make sure that our kids are not only ready for it, uh, but that they pursue it. And so we'll be tracking our kids as they leave ECISD and move off into a post-secondary world. We're also measuring, as you can see, post-secondary completion, also looking at gaps within our system, and then finally school connectedness, how our kids feel about their school environment. One of the things that we know about the education of our children is if they do not feel connected to their school, uh, then learning is negatively affected. And so we'll be measuring and monitoring that as well. We will be reporting out, as you can see, if I go back a slide, you can see at the top that we've established some baseline goals for ourselves. We know how we're performing today in each of these areas. We've established a baseline, or excuse me, a benchmark goals over the next several years. And then finally, by 2024, a set of goals. And we look forward to updating our community on the progress that we make towards each um, of these goals. And then leadership. Uh, very proud of the work that's happening in our system and the impact that not only we're having in our own local community, but across the state of Texas and across the country. In fact, a, a few headlines uh, that you can see on the screen, ECISD, the work that we have done over the last year has caught the attention of many, again, not just in our own community, but across the state and around the nation. Uh, people are watching uh, Ector County ISD. They're learning from us and we're excited to be able to provide uh, those opportunities for other school districts and other parts of these United States to learn and grow and develop from the work that's happening here. At the same time, we're excited to learn from others. One of the things that we're doing as a system is engaging in a variety of different networks, uh, both in the state of Texas and beyond, so that we can learn and grow and be developed as well. Partnerships and grants. Uh, over the last year, we've developed a host of, uh, of partners that help us do this work. One of the things that we know in education is that we do not do this work alone. It takes a village, and we are proud uh, that we've been able to partner with a variety of different organizations uh, to bring not only uh, financial resources uh, to our community, but also um, assistance. Uh, it, um, assistance of uh, through philanthropic organizations, assistance of talent, assistance of ideas, and they have helped us become a better organization. Uh, we're proud to partner with the city of Odessa and, the, and Ector County, provided over a million dollars combined to help us invest in technology resources for our children. We partnered with the NFL Players Coalition uh, to provide wireless access points to the children that live in ECISD so that they can have broadband uh, in and around their communities. Uh, excited to partner with a Permian Strategic Partnership, Grow Odessa, Chiefs for Change, and the Moody Foundation, which have each uh, invested in SpaceX. Again, the SpaceX uh, sa Starlink satellite technology is providing opportunities for children in Ector County to have internet access in their homes. Families that have never had it before now have internet in their homes because of the generous philanthropic support um, of these individuals. Hi, I'm Mike McGee, CEO of Chiefs for Change. We are proud that Superintendent Scott Murray is a member of our bipartisan network of state and district education leaders, serving over 7 million students across the nation. I talk to educators every day, and there is no doubt that Dr. Murray and his team in Ector County are pursuing some of the most innovative plans in the country to meet the challenges of COVID-19 and redesign schools for 21st century learning. Given his creative and forward-looking approach, it's only natural that Dr. Murray would partner with SpaceX and use satellites to get students the home Wi-Fi they wouldn't otherwise have. In today's world, everyone needs the internet. Our team at Chiefs for Change is pleased to provide $150,000 for this and other connectivity projects in the district so students can access the wealth of information they need to succeed.
providing uh, resources, financial resources to ECISD, a grant that, that provided uh, tools for our career and technical education students, as well as PIC education. Thrill, thrilled uh, to be a partner with Chevron in the work that we do for children. Uh, the FMH Foundation provided $200,000 for ECISD Fine Arts, again, supporting the work of our Fine Arts fine arts programs uh, throughout ECISD, grateful to the FMH Foundation uh, for that contribution. The Education Foundation, our own, the ECISD Education Foundation, providing a little over $151,000 in grants uh, to teachers that are throughout ECISD. And in each of our 43 schools, our teachers have this incredible opportunity, thanks to the generosity of our foundation, to support learning in their own classroom environments. Raise Your Hand Texas, providing over $300,000 to help us grow and develop and then expand blended learning for students in ECISD. The Brown Family Foundation provided half a million dollars to invest in the work that we were doing with Opportunity Culture to make sure that teachers have these opportunities uh, through that particular program. Uh, the Texas Education Agency, just in the past year, provided over $3 million in supports to help uh, ECISD expand the program uh, that we are doing, the innovation that's happening in our system. And we're grateful to the Texas Education Agency, again, for over uh, $3 million in investments that have been made this past year in ECISD. The, the Permian Strategic Partnership, a multi-million dollar grant opportunity so that we could expand the Earlier, you met one of our teachers, one of the teachers that's going through uh, the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards process. And thanks to a, a significant contribution by the Permian Strategic Partnership, we were able to not only provide funding for that, but coaching and mentoring as teachers go through that program. A proud partner of the Permian Strategic Partnership. Hi, I'm Tracy Bentley, President and CEO of the Permian Strategic Partnership. Our mission is to strengthen and improve the quality of life for Permian Basin families by partnering with local leaders and communities to make this happen. It takes vision, courage, and leadership to turn big ideas into reality. And this is exactly what we see happening at Ector County Independent School District. The Permian Strategic Partnership is proud to partner with ECISD on an initiative to help fund over 300 ECISD teachers go through the process to earn their national teacher certification. We know we have talented teachers in our classrooms and this will help them reach a new level of excellence which benefits everyone in our community. We are also excited to partner on helping 135 ECISD families gain access to high-speed internet through our SpaceX Starlink initiative. This is the first project of its kind anywhere in the country, and we could not think of a better place to pilot such an extraordinary effort other than Ector County. ECISD sets the example for others to see what can happen when you think big and work together. From all of us at PSP, thank you for your leadership and your partnership. Thinking big and working together. Uh, that's what's happening in Ector County Independent School District. We are thinking big. We are being bold and brave on behalf of the 32,000 children that we serve every single day. Uh, we appreciate the partners that we've developed, appreciate the investments that are being made um, in ECISD so that ultimately those 32,000 children uh, will be uh, ready for uh, the, the world of work, that they will be success. Uh, successful in life and that they will have, uh, really, the sky will be the limit for those students. Hi, I'm State Representative Brooks Langraff. And although Dr. Murray has only been with us for a short period of time, his actions will impact generations of students here in Ector County. You know, like the rest of the state, we've been dealt a tough hand in recent years and teachers and students and their families have been directly and profoundly impacted. But Dr. Murray isn't making excuses. He's getting work done. You know, whether it's striking a deal to bring high-speed internet from outer space or cutting our teacher shortage in half, there's no problem that's too big for Dr. Murray. I'm thankful to have the opportunity to work for students alongside such dedicated educators. You know, we know a thing or two about hard work in Odessa. 
I look forward to continuing our work together to ensure that Ector County students earn a world-class public education. And as you've told me before, after all, those students deserve it and we can do it. And yes, indeed, uh, Representative Landgraf, our, our students do deserve it and we absolutely can do it. In fact, we are doing it. And uh, on behalf of the over 4,000 employees of ECISD, uh, I say thank you to the community in which uh, we work with every day, a community that partners with us in this effort. Uh, thank you to uh, the state of Texas and, and the partners that we have developed across this great state. And thank you to uh, the folks around the country that have partnered with us to do the work that's so critical for the 32,000 kids that we serve every, every single day. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, it is a great day in ECISD. The state of the district is good.